I would like to quickly point out that John the Mouse video has a large selection of videos from North and South America for your viewing pleasure. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now let's get into the cheese of the matter. Like most things that started in the USA, it started in George Wickham's own home workshop, or some would say garage. He started making mining equipment that he used compressed air. That ended up making him some money and moved to a building in Chicago. He also expanded into making other things like knitting equipment. Not sure how that happened, but if you know, leave it in the comments down below. In 1888, the first electric mine locomotive in Illinois began operating in Chicago. When electric undercutting machines started hitting the coal industry, Wickham knew he had a problem. He knew that they would be using electric instead of compressed air. He looked at the available options that they had to move coal out of the mine. Electric locomotives that had overhead cables, that was a source of sparks that could ignite methane in the mine. Bad idea. The other was compressed air locomotives that people were making. To him, that was too large and they also needed recharging stations throughout the mine. Wickham decided that he needed to do something new. He wanted to try powering it by a new fuel, the byproduct of kerosene production. It was gasoline as we know it. Cars were running off of it. Why not a locomotive? In April 1906, he had the first successful gasoline locomotive in the nation built and installed in a large central Illinois coal mine. They did not have any problems with it. They did have to rebuild the engine every three years. Nobody knew anything about the detonation or the octane resistance to detonation. Remember, it was just a waste product back then. It wasn't figured out until 1930 when they came up with the octane measurement. In 1907, they moved their Chicago production plants on Orleans and Ohio streets to Rochelle, Illinois. Main reason, because of its large knitting customer move there. The Vassler Swiss Underwear Company from Chicago. Even back then, they were having union troubles. The first Wickham Locomotive Works building they had built in town was sitting on G Avenue. They built a few different gasoline test locomotives as they were building the other items. Wickham was trying to get a gasoline engine to survive the extremes of a coal mine. This small factory only made small locomotives and they were only powered by gasoline. By 1912, they had outgrew their production space, so they started building a new plant on the corner of 5th Avenue and 2nd Street. This new Wickham factory, according to the map, reads they would move into by March 1st, 1913. The building is a reinforced concrete frame with wire glass and brick between piers. About that time, the Swiss Underwear Company moved back to Chicago. Not to worry, by the next year during World War I, most of their locomotive output of the plant were government orders. That gave them an opportunity to start making bigger and bigger locomotives. Far as I know, they were getting all their steel shipped to them from the big steel mills of Chicago. During this time, they were putting out as much steel as they could for the war effort. By 1922, they added on some more to the plant to increase its production. At this time, the first factory 
it's still vacant on G Avenue. A few years later, in 1929, they had made their first diesel model. They also designed and built the largest gasoline electric locomotive that had been offered to the American Railroad at this time. The largest and most powerful model it ever constructed had a center cab, model 65DE14. Around World War II, they had two variants, A and B. By 1946, they had produced 3,258 gasoline and 2,054 diesels for a total of 5,312 internal combustion locomotives. Wickham continued to expand and progress after the war. They remained popular builders of small diesel switchers through the late 1940s. The increased volume led them to further expand their storage and shipping facilities at the Rochelle plant. 1947, they completed their warehouse with the latest in material handling equipment. For handling the steel slabs and the sheets, they used a 10-ton overhead yard crane with a warehouse for storage. The next year, they added a locomotive test building with a loading dock. Not only did they make parts that they used, but they also used Wessinghouse Air Brake Company products on their locomotives. In February 1952, the Rochelle plant was closed and the locomotive production was shifted to the Baldwin's facility in Eddystone, Pennsylvania. The last Wickham locomotive rolled off the line late March of 1956. This is not the end of these locomotives as they live on around the world. John the Mouse travel map is available for Google Maps. It'll help plan your route to the locations of your favorite videos. It is free to use. I have the link below. Please visit the playlist tab for videos that I have sorted for you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button 